I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the uniform well postness and the inverse invi limit for the benjaminal burgers. And my talk consists of two parts. In the first part, I will give the, some introduction and the background on the problems. And uh, in the second part, I will uh, explain the, the ideas in the, in the proof. OK. The uh, benjaminal Burgers equation uh, reads the form 1. The, uh, this, this is the nonlinear equation with the nonlinear t, very simple, u, uh, u uh, the derivative of, of u, uh, x. And here, uh, h is the Hilbert transfer. And, then, and the, this is the heat linear term. So the heat, uh, Hilbert transfer is a Fourier multiple with the symbol uh, uh, here. So if you take a free transform of this equation, then you can see here it's very different. So uh, this equation has two effects. The first effect is uh, the dispersive effect. It's given by, by this uh, h, uh, the, the, the two order derivative. And uh, if you write this linear equation, as this operator, then you can see. And the, the other effect is the dissipative effect. It's given by this heat kernel. Um, so th the, the dispersive effect uh, is that you, uh, the HS norm of the linear so solution is pre preserved, but with, uh, with decay. And the dissipative effect uh, is both the HS norm and uh, the solution itself will, will decay. So this behaves very differently. Um, formally, if take epsilon equals to zero, then the uh, benjamin burgers equation reduced to the B BO equation. So just uh, simply take, take epsilon e equal to zero. On the other hand, if you take, if you let uh, the dispersive term disappear, then it, it will become the heat equation. So, um, and the BO equation is, is a mathematical model for, for one dimension waves in deep water. And the for that, and as, a, as opposed to the KDD, which is shallow water, or yeah. is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and with Burgess term is, is some dissipative effect occurs in the physical context. It's not, it's not an integrable system, however, is it? BO equation, yes, it it's is. Integrable. Yeah, yes. I see. Okay. It, to, to it is completely yeah, integrable. Is, but I didn't know, Bert, I didn't know this was, was integrable. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there are many s symmetries. In, in, in particularly, we will use the following two. So can, can you go back to that question? I just want to know what, what, what's, what's known. Do you, do you show global existence? No, over, you over everything? Okay. Okay. So you already explained what you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. 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 <laughs> Don't want to uh, the two, two, two symmetries we will, we will use. The first one is the <laughs> scaling invariance. Uh, scaling invariance is, uh, you, you see, the heat. Heat, uh, the dis dispersive term, and the heat kernel is just is, is both two uh, orders, so they have the have the same scaling. The other is the conser conservation loss. Now, BO equation is uh, has man has infinite uh, conservation loss, which in particular give a priority bound on the H K norm. Here, K is the half integer. Not only, not, not like the KDV, K is integer, but, but uh, for, for all half integers. So the conservation law will, will give us a, a lot of a priori bonds. And we will use that. So you have the spectral theory also, right? Pardon? You have the spectral theory also. So probably the, the equations can be written in a lax space, et cetera, right? It is integrable. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Sometimes it's factory variants, they give more information than just... Th then, then this, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I will mention the, 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 the result on the BO equation. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so we, 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 uh, we, are, uh, we are main concerned with the well postedness issues. Uh, the, it consists of four parts. The first is the existence and uniqueness and uh, Continuity and uh, the persistence of regularity uh, to 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 see whether the there is a solution and whether it is unique or not continuous dependence. If the time t can be any large uh, real numbers, then we say it is global. So this is a standard uh, definition. Okay. So no result. Okay. Uh, in in H S. For for S, uh, this 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 is the the, 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 tr 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 the path of the low regularity problem. Okay, so uh, for S bigger than three half, this is uh, implied by the energy methods. So uh, this 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 method is is universal for for many many equations. Didn't exploit any dispersion. So you get global existence for that or not? Is it global existence or it is energy? Here? Here? Yes. Global, global. Not, not, not just the closeness, but global, uh, global regular. I suppose you have, you have everything got everything yeah. conserved. So you yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I want to uh, point uh, two results. Uh, so, so this result, uh, S bigger uh, is larger or equal to one, uh, used the used the gauge transform. Be before this, no gauge transform. Okay. So here, uh, Tao used the gauge transform to obtain the global well positives in the in H one, and H one because H one is is uh, it, it, it has a, uh, a priority bound due to the conservation loss. That's natural. H1 also, H1 half also L2. And the. Uh, I mean, the energy is, a, is an H1 energy or not? Energy is H, H1 half. It's, it's H1 half. Yes. But H1 is also a conserved quantity. No, 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 not conserved. It's given by the H1 level conservation loss. So, so in, in the H uh, K over 2, I think it is natural space. For, for, for the BO equation. And uh, this, this result is given by UNESCO and uh, Koenig in, in, in 2002. They used uh, the, uh, the gauge transform used by Tao and uh, the, uh, the Borgen space, the structure. This is all on the line, yeah? Pardon? Yeah, 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 yeah yes, yes, yes. And, and, so, and so what does that mean? So that I can take L2 data, yeah. and, um, and then I will have a global uh, existence of, of L2 data, is that the statement? Yeah. And, uh, and, and do I, but the regularity doesn't improve as, I, as time evolves, right? There's no, is there any regularity, is there any improvement in regularity? Uh, uh, that's what I guess I asked that before. I guess there's no, there's no improvement in regularity. No, no. They just, uh, just all disperse it. They just prove, yeah. Yeah, they have proved the. Uh, okay. Uh, so what's global there? Pardon? These ones are global. This one, global. They're all global, are they? Well, they're all oh, no, no, no. No, this one is all local. Yeah. The, this one is also local. So where, this where one is global. global. Hmm? The even, the, the, power, the multiples of a house, right? Yeah, 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 yeah yes. Those are global. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half yeah. integers is so going to be. If you would perturb this equation into bits that looks a harmless way by putting a few lower order terms, that you break the integrability. Pardon? Sorry? Assume that you perturb the equation a little bit. 
yeah. by adding something yeah. that is harmless yeah. that would take away the integrability. Yeah. In a way, that's what they're, that's what they're going to do, of course. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. going to so uh, then still a, a reserve ethical. S so so you, you still would keep an, uh, a global reportedness theory, or there would be problems? Uh, Th th this result didn't uh, exploit uh, the integrability no. of the equation, or all of them. Yeah, no, assume you wouldn't have integrability. No, but they do use or don't use the integrability? They, do, they, they don't they use. They do not, they yeah. don't know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's local, but the part for the first one, which is global, are they using integrability or not? This one's global, right? This one? No, that's yeah. local. Local, local. Okay, it's all local. Local. Yeah, all this, local. One, this one is global. That one's global. Yeah, because because you have uh, three half conservation loss. Okay. Okay. Good. So what, okay. what about global? Okay. Well, that's global. Yeah, that's I, I, I didn't know this because yeah. I, I I see. Global that is <laughs> this, <laughs> this and this. Okay. No, if you would add something to the equation to take away the integrability. Yeah. That's still lower order. So you would. What would be the conserved quantity? There is an L two and an H one conserved quantity or some kind of thing like that. Just from the hundred ton structure, what are we Oh, doing? oh, uh, one half. What is it? This is one half? One half. The, 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 the natural energy is the one half. One. one is... Uh, so uh, what's the hundred ton? And where should I down the uh, Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's... Uh, Maybe it's a constant. This one. So it's the integral of what? It's kind of difficult to read. Yeah. So this this one. Yeah. So 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 this is uh, just a. No, I can't uh, read it. I just can't read it because of the lower here. Let me let me. Oh oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll just put the power off so we can see it. Okay. Useful. Ah, so it's useful. Yeah. <laughs> so so this is like uh, the gradient. So, so you move one half. Oh, one half. Yeah, okay. over here. So, okay, and that's integrated. Yeah, yeah. Th so this gives gives one yeah, half. half yeah. yeah, yeah. You also have a conservation of the L two now, I guess. Yeah, L two. Yes, yes, yes. So this is the one. That's so this is the Hamiltonian. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes it clear. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. And. Uh, but the, but all of this result didn't exploit the, the completely integral bill. Mm -hmm. okay. None of them use it, but you're saying uh, of those results, the only one that's global is this, uh, uh, this quantity. Yeah. Here, no, here, this one. Yeah. That's global. That's global. Okay. Yes. B because uh, he, he exploited a, a little bit of the dispersion. Okay. And uh, your post uh, you see the BO equation has a dispersion with two order, and the KDV has the, the three, third order. So BO has less dispersion than KDV equation. So it, it behaves um, bad, badly. So uh, the ill post first one is the solution map will f fail to be C2 smooth in HS for any S. So the, the, the solution map it cannot be like uh, analytic. You mean know, like a time, a time uh, fixed time map from, from the initial data to, to, the to the solution. Exactly. Not smooth in the HS space, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. This, yeah, this is shown the, by morning at the sort and the wet cough. Uh, uh, actually, using Bogen's idea for the like uh, the KDV, not a C three below uh, nucleus three quarters, and this t this result actually tells us that uh, the Picard uh, uh, perturbative argument uh, will won't work for the Bell equation, and um, even worse, the solution map is not uh, locally Lipschitz continuous in this. So. Uh, so the wave interactions in the BO equation is very bad. Actually, actually, 
then their, their result also shows a, a little bit below the KDV. KDV is, uh, I, I would say, degree of three, the, the dispersion. If the de uh, degree of less than three, then this result hold. So KDV is the first one you can use. It's okay for KDV, it's okay for KDV sure. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is basically the same type of results we have yeah. in terms of regularity? Uh, you mean for the Schrodinger equation? The derivative Schrodinger equation. Derivative, but derivative is cubic nonlinear term. What? Deliver, derivative of Schrodinger equation is cubic. cubic. cubic okay. Yeah, but here is quadratic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quadratic has more interactions, but had bad interactions. OK. Uh, so, so for the BL equation, one, one cannot uh, use the Picard uh, perturbative mass machinery. And the, but for the benjamin Burgers equation, it's, it's much easier. Since you have the heat, the dissipative term, you can use the dissipative term to make the, 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 the perturbative method work. Okay, but you, you will depend on the, because, because the heat equation is it's much easier to, to understand. Actually, one can go to go to the critical regularity, but uh, I don't see why 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 here has uh, the, the end point uh, open. I don't I don't see that because here the equation. I think uh, at this critical point, uh, it it is also solved. So uh, now I state uh, our purpose. Uh, the purpose is to, you, you, you see, the B.O. Burgers equation is, is very easy, but uh, you, you, you depend on the epsilon, uh, epsilon I, I would say, the dissipative term. And the B.O. equation has, uh, is, is globally well posed. So I want to study the limit behavior. Let epsilon go to zero. Whether uh, what, what is the connection between the two solutions? So in order to, to do this, we, want, uh, we need uh, to first uh, give an alternative proof for the, uh, of the global well potential in H1 without uh, using gauge transform. And, uh, to, sh and uh, to show this, uh, so this is like uh, the, the stability of the B.O. Burgess equation with, the with respect to the parameter epsilon. Uh, why we need to, do, to redo the proof? Because, OK, the gauge transform does not apply to the B.O. Burgess equation. If I, if I ask for global well poseness in H2 or some higher space, is that an easier question or not? Yes. Yeah, yes, I, 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 I will mention, so here. If, if you uh, assume have uh, higher regularity, this problem is, is easy because you, don't, uh, you just use the energy structure and the dissipative term will not affect any of the, the, the structures. So, so Uh, so I, I, I just need uh, H1. Only H1? Oh, no, no, I, I need H1, but no, I didn't. What, what is a theory control? If you have an epsilon there, so you look at that equation with the epsilon. Yeah. So what are the, the quantities that you have, the, for which you have an a theory bound? Oh, oh like just like uh, the uh, parabolic energy, like, like that. But I, I will mention later. Yeah. Okay, so uh, gives more a, a priori bound, uh, but uh, depend on the epsilon. Okay, and uh, uh, even see the limit uh, appear in other contexts, like uh, uh, now a Stokes equation goes to Euler equation, and uh, here Ginzburg Landau equation goes to Schrodinger equation, and the KDV Burgers equation goes to KDV equation. So. Uh, 
here is our main result. Uh, we assume uh, the initial data belongs to HS, uh, and the, of course the real value. For S is larger or equal to one, then we show the the Benjamin Burgess equation is uh, is uniformly globally well posed. That's that is what I mean. Uniform well posedness. I mean the the, the 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 bound and the continuity is independent of epsilon. So not uh, like uh, uh, before, if you use the dissipative term, the 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 well posedness will depend on epsilon. But we need to. Uh, well, well posed independent. In, in, yeah, independent. Yes, and uh, with this independence, we can show this limit. Okay. So, if if you assume uh, the same topology, if you start with H S and you uh, consider the limit in H S, then there is no cons convergence rate. So, this is. Uh, can be seen from the linear solution. You see. Okay. But you say there's no con there cannot be any rate. You're saying. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're, you're saying that there's no power of epsilon I can put in the right hand side. Yeah. 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 You're gonna explain why. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure I understood it. That, that's what I mean. No convergence rate. Because if if you want to if this from that can be seen from the linear solution. Mm -hmm. The linear solution, if you take uh, uh, let epsilon go to zero, this will go to this bo linear equation, but uh, no convergence rate. If you do not uh, uh, assume the uh, u zero has higher order regularity. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, so you cannot get a uh, epsilon to the power something. But uh, if you assume more regularities, then you can have a convergence rate. For example, if you assume uh, two order higher, then you get an epsilon. You're doing it for, for, for H1, right? H1. H1. Yeah, yeah. This one? Okay. So, yeah, so this is. So, this is uniform in epsilon, right? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. That's the crucial point. So, but uh, you say you don't have this, this gauge transformation. Yeah. But on the other hand, the H1 reserves of tau are huge in this gauge transformation. Yeah, yes, yes. So, you have another approach for that? Yeah, yes. I need to give another proof. Uh, and, and, and uniformly, I, I, I would have, I think maybe, maybe equicontinuous is more appropriate. Just to, be, just to say the continuity of this solution map uh, is independent of the epsilon. So you fix uh, u norm, then you can get a de delta, and uh, uh, make it as close as you want without dependence of the epsilon. Okay. Which one? It does depend upon the initial data within. Yeah, sure, yes. Because we don't have the uh, analytic uh, dependence. We just have the continu continuous dependence. OK? For my recollection, when you try to solve an equation, say, like that, this equation, even with epsilon equal to 0, and you do the usual general kind of scheme, basically, I, I guess you just gain one derivative. Yeah, 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 yes, so yes. So just yeah. inverting the linear thing, you gain your half derivative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you do the analytics twice, so you gain one full derivative. Yes. Another question, if you would be on a circle. On a circle. Did, did you think about it, what happened, or are there results or not? Well, we can, we can discuss it later. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. These results are very, uh, are very much for R. So the, there are results, say, 
you mean, there, there are results on the periodic case for the BO equation, you mean? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, but... Uh, even with the zero, right? Yes, 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 but, it depend, but uh, they all use the gauge the transform on the periodic case. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but in the periodic case, we have one more conservation of the moment will vanish. Yeah, so I, I'm just concerned when you do an iteration yeah. scheme. Yeah, yeah. You, you lose the derivative on the right. Yes, yes. So you have to regain the derivative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So whatever you have on R, it's not necessarily happening on the, in, the, in, the, in the periodic case. But, but on the real line, we can just uh, cover one half derivative. We also lose the derivative. Yeah, yeah, but you recover. No, I think you recover the full derivative, right? Because when you do, you are, when you look at the integral equation, yeah. you gain this one half twice. No? No, no. This is my understanding that you have. No, no. I, I, because th uh, actually, this is the worst uh, term why the ill person is hold because we have we, we, you, you 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 cannot uh, perturbatively you cannot uh, gain one derivative i may, may misremember that i thought when when you do the herbert in fact it's like applying twice yeah you apply the the linearized you either linearize the, the linear part and then you com you uh, compose with the adjoint and then you get basically you double the gain of the derivative so that would give you what you use one oh. the yeah but the uh, yeah 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 but uh, with the i think with the low frequency away from zero it's okay Yeah, I, I, I will mention, I will mention, yes, I, I will explain. Okay, but, uh, oh, oh, okay. Okay, so I, I, I would like to say that uh, the result is not surprising because for fixed epsilon, we have like uh, everything, uh, many, many understanding of the equation. And for epsilon e equal to zero, we have the, Tau's result. So it is, it is very uh, acceptable you expect uh, uniform because, at the because in the extreme case, you get a uh, global yeah, opposite. Yeah, so yeah, that's the problem, yes, <coughs> yes. So, so um, the first uh, try is to like uh, using Tau's proof to the benjamin burgers equation. But, uh, okay, I will explain the gauge transform does not apply to this equation. Uh, gauge transform of the BO equation is, is uh, used to handle the, the high-low interactions. Can you recall what this is because it's kind of not, so what, what's the gauge transform we're doing here? So you just multiply with the, what, it's like an integrating factor there, right? Here, yes, 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 yeah, yeah. So it's the, the yeah, 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 yes. And the, uh, if you want to uh, study the BO equation perturbatively, then you will face this worst case. So the derivative falls on the high frequency component. And uh, uh, this will give a um, bigger trouble in, in the perturbative analysis. The role of the gauge transform is to avoid the, the, the derivative. The, 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 the derivative in the nonlinearity transform? You mean the, the yeah, 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 yes. Here, the, this 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 gauge transform is not uh, is not the exact form, but you have uh, technical issues because the Hilbert transform you have to split it under into positive frequency and uh, negative frequency, but basically it is like this, and uh, the derivative uh, the the gauge transform how it work uh, after you take uh, you make the gauge transform the v satisfies better equation, okay? The, the, the V is the gate transform of U. And uh, the better means this nonlinearity has better high-low interactions. 
So, so you still have the derivative in non-linearity. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, but uh, but uh, the high low removed or weakened by by the by uh, in, in this non-linearity, the the, the high low interactions and the and the uh, the, the worst high low interactions was removed or weakened. That's the that's the point of the gauge transform. So for th for this new equation, you can do uh, using using the Borghese space to do this, but uh, very technical because you have the you have to deal with the factor of the gauge transform. So but uh, basically you can do if if you if you remove the high low interaction in the non-reality using the toy model, you can exactly you can easily see why it works. Yeah. So somehow you have to recapture the derivative. So, so you should expect some kind of smoothing effect of all or one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you, mean, you mean what I did? Oh, I, I say a little bit how this analysis goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah explain. Because here I, I explain the role of gauge transfer. Okay. I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to use it. And. Uh, Oh, uh, that's that's uh, I mean why gauge transfer works in in this yeah. because here you see you see here here you have the uh, two order derivative one or one derivative falls on here and one derivative falls on this factor then you cover you, you can cover u u x so you make a cancellation to r remove the non cancel, Can cancel yeah. Cancellation. yeah yeah yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, this factor is very easy. You see, it, it is of modula modulation one, right? So, so basically, you can, you can go back and forth between u and v. I mean, I mean you can capture the information. You don't lose much information. But uh, let, let me ask you, this is a question I was asking you the other day. Do yeah. you, are there, I mean, do you know of other sort of more, more complicated sort of Transforms, uh, maybe not gauge transforms, but some, some more complicated sort of change of variables. Which so this is the idea of normal form, right? That you, you keep on changing variables so that you're you got to mask the equation, yeah. and you try to make it nicer by 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 making a, a, a by making a good uh, I don't know gauge transform or other things. So uh, are there, are there, is this technique very common? Yeah, this technique is also yeah. used on modified gauge. Okay. Yeah, no, because I, I yeah, I, f I feel that uh, first uh, do 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 some transform, yeah. then do the then analysis. Do the analysis. Yeah, 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 yes. Okay. And uh, to to be more precise. I, I would like to take uh, the gauge transform of the derivative of nonlinear Schrodinger equation to see how the gauge transform works. Because the gauge transform for this equation is very easy. Uh, okay, here, it has, uh, here it is the cubic nonlinearity. The worst term is this. The derivative falls on the component of u. And the other component, uh, this, is, is, is very good. Okay, because because this is uh, even this person. So, and uh, using the gauge transform, it's exactly defined like this. Then you can obtain the equation of v. You see, here yes, the is much better, right? yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Yes, gauge is much better because this 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 gauge you can exactly go back and forth. You have the inverse of this gauge transform, so so it's much easier. So. You see, the gauge transform kills this term, this that bad term. Okay. But uh, if you apply the gauge transform to the uh, Benjamin or Burgess equation, you will see the trouble, because here, formally, if you add a dissipative term, because the dispersive term you have uh, i in here, and here has a no, no i. So if you uh, apply the gauge transform, you this will reproduce the, 
by this term. So I don't know, I don't know whether there is some other transforms because for the, okay, for, for the BO equation, the gauge transform relies on the factor that uh, u is real valued. So if, you, if, if, if the u is complex valued, then this factor is very, very bad. So I don't, uh, so there's no control. So, but for the, uh, for the BO equation, so uh, Benjamin Berger's equation, because of the deceptive term, it will break down the, the symmetry of the equation. So the gauge transform, you simply apply the gauge transform to this, then the, 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 the trouble is still there. And uh, we need to do something else. Okay, let's, let's see. So uh, start from this equ uh, equation. We, we would like to try first uh, the nowadays standard method using, using the Bulgarian space to in, in the Benjamin O equation. So to see uh, what is going on. So uh, standardly write the equation in the integral form and uh, cut it uh, smoothly in time. So you get a local integral equation. And uh, you, so the, the, the point is to, to uh, construct a, a metric space to make a contraction mapping. So the, the, the space is the, the ball in the XSB space. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. So you mean, you mean, uh, I mean why, why, just iterate the first step. Iterate the second iteration. So the second iteration, then some tends to remove it. Okay. And the linear estimate, the, the standard linear estimate, you see, uh, here, this is uh, measure the linear solution, and this is measure the retarded uh, linear uh, solution. So here you has a has a game of the regularity in in this time, and uh, using using this, one can um, game some game some uh, regularity in space. So here you see. Ha the same as, but uh, with this different. So you're using this. So yeah, really you are really gaining your validity back. That's what it is. Right? No. No, go, go back to the screen. Okay. Here. I mean, I mean, the, the linear yeah, yeah, yeah. is always true, right? Yeah, but the W, um, let's see. So what was the W? So the w, w is the BO equation, the, the BO propagator. Did, did, did okay, yeah. so go back to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So the, the, the whole thing is to basically is to prove the binary estimate, right? In the in the in the standard machinery. Yes. One unit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, this one unit you gain on the B yeah. can be used, in fact, if you lower the gain. So gaining one unit on the B allows you to gain one derivative in X of this guy. Because that's, that's more or less what this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. So in this mechanism, you still, you, you gain, you, you can really get gain a derivative. Oh no no! But I mean I mean for the BO this is not true. Okay. No, but this inequality is for the BO or the other one. Oh, um, th I, I, th this is for the general machinery. 
the, 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 yeah, yeah. What I what I would, would like in this method, we need, we need proof. But this binding estimator fails for any s in for the BO equation because of the dispersion is too weak. Okay. But for the KDV, this this is true. For s can go to this power, right? So that's the that's the main main main, main difference between you, you see this is a the matter of the dispersive of effect. The B it was worse on cost back down the distance of you would still have this phenomenon, right? You mean not on the real line on the pure Arctic? Well, I mean you have to introduce the spatial equal distance. I believe this was the, the way uh, these guys came and they said I was doing the Zakharov. One of the first treatments of Zakharov. Yeah. On, on, you mean on the on the on the boundary? No, no, they were basically subdividing R, whatever, R or the higher dimension into interblocks, and then defining their norms in terms of the. So in other words, they would have something which is. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I I, I will use that. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's. Um. But uh, this, this binding estimator fails for any S because of the hilo interactions. The hilo interactions is very worse, actually. You see, uh, okay, this, this is the dyadic uh, piece of the XSB space. If you measure the hilo interactions, so this is low, this is high, you can only get uh, uh, one half. See, there is, there is a big gap. So you, you see, basically we, we need a, there's no this factor. It would be nice, but, uh, but uh, this factor is essential. So for the BO equation, one can only show uh, such a result, only one half derivative by the space. So that is, uh, that's very far, right? Because the derivative is, is missing one half. Uh, actually, this interaction is used uh, to show eopotenes result. So, the uh, it's not C two smooth, or it's not uh, locally uniformly continuous. Okay. And uh, to to deal with the bad interaction, so basically you see whether you use the gauge transform or use the energy method or with in enhanced. Because energy method, basically you need to uh, multiply some function on both sides of the equation. They're integrated by part. So you can let the derivative fall on the, fall, fall on the low frequency component. That's the, that's the whole point of the energy method. So are you going to use this enhanced energy method? Is that the idea or not? Uh, I, I will use, use uh, energy method combined uh, XSB structure. Okay. That, 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 that's, okay, now I introduce. Uh, I will mainly use their method. Okay. So the, the, they, they, when they prove the global hypothesis of the KP1 equation in the energy space, uh, UNESCO, Kenninger, Tataru, so introduced uh, a, a new method. Uh, because the KP1 equation is, has the similar phenomena, it is also uh, just uh, can gain one half derivative. Uh, so this method uh, can, can be viewed as uh, the energy type uh, method and uh, the, uh, this XSB structure com combination. And uh, it is particularly useful to to deal with the high-low interactions, with a uh, high-low interaction with, uh, with some gap. That's the, so that's, uh, we will use, use this in the BO equation, but uh, you have to, uh, using some, actually you put some more weight on the XSB structure. Okay, now I uh, explain the short time structure, XSB structure. So 
uh, uh, here, a dot k is the standard uh, dyadic decomposition function with, uh, without, without decomposition around the origin. And uh, this is the space dyadic piece. But we, we need to put some weight, this, this weight, OK? Because to, uh, if, if, if you use the standard, uh, without this weight, we have some logarithmic uh, problems. So we need to put some weight on the, on the structure of, 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 of this space. This, this is the dyadic uh, piece. This is in Fourier or this is standard? Or a Fourier space. Fourier, yeah. Fourier space. So, so are you taking that? So, so C is the dual of the X, right? Because Yes, yes. And then tau is? Tau is the uh, of, of T. Of T. Yeah. T. Yeah. So you, you're going in frequency space. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I, 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 I would like to mention that uh, this, this weight is borrowed from UNESCO Koenig's work, but they, they use a the similar weight. So when k is getting large, what's happening there? OK. So, yeah, so there is a fluctuation, yeah. fluctuation going on there. Yeah. This weight uh, is here. To suggest, because in the inter wave interaction, the, the Worst case is the low frequency with large modulation. So this way is used to strengthen that yeah. component. And uh, that, that it, we, we use the weight to, to remove, to, to avoid some logarithmic uh, divergence. And then uh, use the structure Use the uh, at uh, this frequency, use the structure in a very short uh, time interval. So here you add a add a cutoff function. The cutoff function is very supported in the scale of two to the power negative mm -hmm. k, right? Yep. So this is the dyadic piece of our resolution space, and this is the this is. Nk is used to measure the nonlinearity. So here, you see, here has a i to the 2 to the k, which is consistent with this. OK. Then uh, you define the, the whole space on the whole frequency. So you, you just uh, add them together. And uh, for t, uh, t is just uh, you restrict the, uh, the function. No, no, no. Uh, the, the space onto the uh, interval. So, so <coughs> this is all going to work even for the even for the case of tau studies, right? And this will work even at at, at uh, epsilon equals zero. Oh, this this structure. This, this, this is what we. Uh, yes, so I I, I just. You're going to be able to reprove tau without using any kind of any kind of uh, gauge transformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, this. Uh, I, I I explain this for this epsilon equals to zero. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm doing now. Yeah. But now what I don't understand because I got lost uh -huh. is what these different norm how these different norms take care of the problem that, that you had and that Hello interaction. Yeah, yeah. I, I will mention. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't see that. Okay. So you see okay, uh, in one word this struct this space is the uh, X as B with a short time interval, depend on the frequency. If you avoid those interactions, then you OK. I see. And uh, yeah, you, you see, so using this space, uh, using this space, we need uh, to prove, like, uh, we, we need to prove to, to, to redo the the, the, the uh, uh, in the XSB space. So we get this linear estimate. Here, 
we have we need to use another energy space. This is not the not not the HS norm of the initial data, but the uh, kind of energy space. Okay. Yeah, Sorry? That, that sounds good, but Sorry? I say practically you just iterate these things and then you see what goes wrong, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Then you adjust your norm in some sense. Yes, yes, yeah. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. First, you see the standard method uh, has some gap. Then you, 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 you uh, yeah, adjust the norm in a very short interval, then see it, it is controlled. So I, I, I will explain. Okay. Now, in, uh, on this space, the estimate uh, is true. Here, we, we cover the one derivative. For s bigger than, in large or bigger than one, actually, we can do much better. But uh, for the energy estimate, uh, we, we, we do not uh, have, better, have good uh, estimates. So, but but the, the, the point is, here, you cover the one der derivative. You gain one derivative in space. Uh, if you use the access B space, you, ga you gain one half derivative. That's the, that's the whole point. So, uh, more intuitively, I would like to explain why the high low interaction in, in here is okay. Because the high low interaction, if you want to control it uh, in the full time interval, the full time interval, I mean, I mean, I mean, this interval, it is it has uh, divergence uh, like a one half derivative loss, right? But if you control the interaction in a very short time interval, like uh, to the to the uh, two to the negative k, this scale time, the the interaction is uh, controlled. So that that's the uh, that's the whole point. So you first uh, you first uh, see why why. Uh, the standard uh, interaction is, is out of control, then you adjust the norm to make that controlled. Then there are rest to be controlled. So the rest is controlled by the energy, energy type. So this also can be viewed as uh, enhanced uh, energy method by the access B structure. Okay. Uh, also, I would like to mention that uh, the energy space is uh, uh, the, the, the energy is fixed. Did, uh, didn't uh, cut it. Uh, did, didn't rely on the dyadic uh, uh, the, the, the short time interval. So we would like to uh, we would like to use. We would like to use the <coughs> XSB space uh, structure in as large time interval as possible. So, if because the time the, the interval is is larger, this norm is stronger. So, uh, when you so, so when you do the energy estimate, you can get a better estimates. But uh, we need uh, the interval to be small to control the high low interaction. So that, that's uh, contradicted uh, to the energy m uh, estimates. So this will uh, be explained. And uh, so uh, why the high-low interactions is under control is explained in this lemma. So basically, we see we have we, we need to control the high low interactions, but here we don't have a factor. The the, the whole th thing is when you consider the interaction in the short time interval, you can assume the modulation has a has a lower bound. So the the um, the the, the uh, L turns bef is controlled by the L turn, so the sum, summation of the 
uh, case turn, if you, you if you consider the interaction in the in the short interval. So here, you can assume all of the modulation has a lower bound. So that's that's the crucial thing to 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 do the high-low interactions, because uh, in the standard method, uh, you 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 can you you only you can only assume that uh, the largest modulation has a lower bound provided by the resonance, but uh, here you can you can assume all of the modulation has a lower bound like this. Then you can you can gain uh, good decay in the proof. So I mean, I mean that's technical reasons. So now. Let me recall so far what do we have. We have this for the BO equation. Okay. We have the linear estimate and we have the bilinear estimate. So in, in practice, we take uh, V equals to this nonlinearity. So we need to control the energy of, of U. Then we need to do the energy estimates. And the energy estimates, we, we will do like uh, this. So con you see, the energy, th this estimator use the structure of the equation. Before, the, the, uh, the, the, the linear estimate and the binary estimate didn't exploit much structures. We, you, you, you didn't uh, uh, distinct the, the the um, nonlinearity, you just uh, perturbatively. But in the energy estimator, you need the energy cancellation. So you you you, you will uh, use integration by part to to move the derivative on the lower frequency component. This is exactly like uh, like the energy method, the classical energy method. But here you have a stronger structure. You see, in the classical energy method, this norm is basically just uh, the L the HS norm of the solution with S very, very big. And in the enhanced, uh, enhanced energy method, this norm would be the uh, maximal function of the solution, of the U. But here, this norm could be the short time XSB structure. That's, uh, that's why. The energy method, uh, energy estimate in, in this estimate would be improved. So that depends on if the, the, the right hand side, the norm is, is stronger, then you can get better energy estimates. So the classical energy method requires S bigger than 3 half because here you just use the HS norm of, of, of the U. That's the whole point. And uh, in order to get uh, better estimates, we need uh, this norm to be to be strong. So we need uh, the, the 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 short time interval to be large. Okay. So so here, smaller interval will impl will imply better estimate in the binary estimates, but a larger interval will imply better estimate in the energy estimates. So that's you, you need to take a balance. So that, that's, uh, you need to take the optimal scale of the short time interval, okay? And uh, the proof of the energy estimate is, is just like the classical energy methods. But uh, you, 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 you uh, decompose the, it uh, dyadically. So you just need to estimate uh, the three linear estimates. And, and, and the three linear estimate, uh, and this one is just uh, the energy cancellation. You can move this derivative falls on the low frequency component. So that is, is like, uh, like the classical energy method. But uh, you estimate the three linear form in this new structure space, not, uh, not uh, the HS norm of, of the solution. OK? So, now we have these estimates, the linear estimate, the binary estimate, and the energy estimate. So you see, you can, you, you, you can close the argument if, 
you assume the initial data has very small norm. So you use using continuity argument, you can you can get the bound of this norm. And again, control of everything. So and uh, so this is how you can get control uh, the you, you, you can gain the, the bound of the solution. So we didn't exploit the uh, gauge transform. We use energy method uh, enhanced by some XSB structures. Okay, now we need to deal with the difference. So difference of two equations, uh, difference of the BL equations. So, th so this one is the, you, you, you have, if you have two solutions, then you make a difference. The difference satisfies a new equation. So do the same thing, but you need to estimate uh, the energy estimates for difference. Okay? So here is the main estimate for the energy of the difference. You see, you first measure is in E0 and in E1. And uh, so, with, with this, you can um, pr prove the global web postness. Okay? I would like to remark that uh, energy estimates for the difference is usually more, more difficult. But uh, for the equation itself, it's much easier because you, you have many more, uh, you have more struct uh, symmetries. So you can uh, apply like uh, I method or like, uh, I, don't know, I don't know whether the normal form reduction, you can do the energy estimate for the equation itself. So, so the a priori bound for the solution is usually easier to get. But uh, the continuity for the difference is uh, much difficult, much more difficult. Because for the energy estimate, uh, you can only, you can only on the do, do it on the L2 level. And you cannot, uh, you, you, you don't have much, you don't have many symmetries to, to modify the energy. So you see a basic uh, point is that in the energy of the, of, of the equation itself, the resonant case is actually good because you have the resonant case because then you have much more symmetries. So this term will have a good cancellation. But when you consider the resonance case in the difference equation, the symmetry is gone. So you cannot control anything. Also, so that's, that's why I, uh, we, we, we cannot deal with many problems in the difference case, but uh, we can obtain the a priori bound. Okay. So to, to prove the global hypothesis in H1, we just need to prove this proposition. So here, you have the uniform continuity, but uh, f uh, f f uh, fixed to two. What, what's H Which one? H infinity. Oh, H infinity, it's H, 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 K, the U. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yes. So, um, then we, you, 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 with this bound, uh, with, with this proposition, you can prove the global hypothesis uh, with the help of conservation laws. Okay, so here we do not uh, use the gauge transform. Then we can easily apply the whole argument to the B O Burgess equation. But uh, the, the 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 whole thing is to is to prove a uh, uniform linear estimates. Because the binding estimate is the same. The uh, energy estimate uh, will not affect by the deceptive term because you have good, uh, actually yeah, you give more, more a priori bound. So the linear estimate uh, would be a little bit uh, technical because the, you, you have XSB structure and the equation is just uh, for time forward directions. You have to extend uh, the equation in the full time interval. And, uh, and uh, you, you need to prove the linear estimator 
uniform in your own epsilon. So that's, that, but uh, this, is, this is just a technical. After, after the linear estimate is done, the energy estimate is easier to get because this distributive term will not affect, okay, and the, the, this one. So, okay, here is the a priori bound of the B.O. Burgess equation. So here you have one more bound, okay? Then we recall how we prove the uniform global address. First, by scaling, we, uh, we assume the initial data is, very, is of very small norm. Then by the energy estimates and the short time the XSB structure, we obtain uniform local well positives. Then, using the conservation law, we obtain uniform global. Yeah. That's, the, that's the how we do this. And uh, with this, to do the image in the limit, you just uh, take the difference of the two solutions, right? This is the B.O. Burgess equation. This is the B.O. equation. So you take a difference and see whether uh, this equation satisfies this. Okay. So, First, uh, you view this term as a nonlinear term. So you do the same thing for the difference equation. Then you, you will need to measure the, this term in this nonlinear space. Okay? So this lemma is to use that. Then you do the same thing. You get uh, this. Do the energy estimate, linear estimate, binary estimate, you get this. So you will uh, so f then you get uh, the uh, difference in the HF one norm with the epsilon, but uh, provided uh, it has a higher order regularity. So this is the first step. Then, in order to prove to keep the same regularity, you just uh, write the difference into three pieces. So this is the regularized solution. So uh, write it uh, into three terms. The first term and the third term is implied by the uniformly continuity. So you see, n goes to infinity, this goes to phi. So this will be small uniformly. And for the middle term, you fix the n. This, this initial data has higher order regularity. So you can take, uh, yeah. So you can take uh, this. You fix the first. You fix the n. Then you take let epsilon go to zero. This is how you get around the fact that you don't have uniform. Uh, you know, uh, you, you don't have a control over the energy. You, you, you just split it up into these into these uh, uh, different energy zones. And so yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So so I just use the uniform well positives. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> took a little bit longer.